welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to be going over building an air ride beam for a VW Bug chassis that I have here. It's actually 1958 that we're going to be doing a full restoration on, documenting it all so you guys can watch it. So this chassis is going to be getting the whole works. Uh, pan have replaced, air ride front and rear, wheel wheels all the way around, motor, trans, wheels, tires, powder coat, everything. So we're going to be doing that, but like I said, this video in particular, we're going to be going over the air ride beam that we're going to be building. So in order to do this, you're going to need obviously the material. So you're going to need the uh, tubes that you're going to be, need to make. We need shock relocators, through rods, um, the shock towers themselves, and then the center mounts. Okay, so you can get the center mounts off your stock beam, or you can buy them new. Um, you can get the steel tubes from a metal yard, and then you're going to be able to have to find somebody that has the shock towers, or if you can cut them out yourself, then you know, more power to you that way also. I just think it's a little bit cleaner for us to get them from a buddy that makes them for us. Um, and it's obviously easier for us. So you're gonna need the material. Okay, we're gonna need a welder. So you're gonna need access to a welder or if you have a welder, even better. Um, this particular beam right here, we're, we're gonna be TIG welding. Okay, so you can do MIG weld, TIG weld, stick weld. Stick weld might be a little bit of an overkill on this particular project, um, but nevertheless, you can do it. Okay, so um, like I said, this is an air ride beam. So we're not gonna be putting air shocks in it, not air shocks, we're not gonna be putting adjusters in it, okay? Um, but if you wanted to put adjusters in it, all you gotta do is weld them in, okay? And that'll make you a static beam and then you just narrow your stock um, leaves. This one here, like I said, we're not gonna be putting leaves, we're gonna be putting metal through rods in it so they're more responsive. Um, just better ride it doesn't sag on one side stuff like that so um let's just kind of go over the process of it and then i'll kind of uh show you guys what to do so this is pretty much almost everything that we need in order to build this beam um we're just missing a couple things but these right here are our new shock towers okay they're a little bit thicker so that when you air up the weight of the car is actually going to be sitting on this so these won't flex at all but you can see they got a little bit of a bend in them right there so we bend them right there so you can clear the body when you go a uh, four inch or five inch narrow beam the way you don't rub on the body fresh painted car you don't want to scratch the inside right there um these are our new tubes so these are just two inch 120 wall round tube and you can pick up from any local steel yard okay our new bottom shock relocators so these right here my buddy uh, my buddy makes them for me he's going to be cutting me out one more because i'm missing the other one um but these just kick out the bottom shock okay the arm goes here and the bottom shock kicks out um this is where the stock shock goes and we're going to be pushing it out this way that way when you turn the tie rods don't hit the air shock okay uh brand new mounts like i said you can use your stock mounts that are on your car if you can get them off Okay, but we elected to get brand new ones here. My buddy makes all these parts for me. Um, new bushings. Okay, obviously you're gonna need new bushings because uh, stock beam is link, uh, not link pin. Um, needle bearing. So you're gonna uh, need to get new bushings if you can't machine these and go needle bearing. Um, we got obviously the arms and we got the uh, three quarter inch square solid stock. So those are our through rods. Okay, the only thing we're missing is like I said, one of these and we're missing the air shocks. So, but we can pr uh, pretty much get this whole thing together other than this one getting welded on there. So we can just go over all these steps and then um, we'll get that and we'll weld it on and you know, that'll be that. Okay, so now I'm back at the house. Um, I had to make a quick run to Harbor Freight real quick because my sister's dog actually chewed up my tape measure. So I did not have a tape measure to make sure that the beam is centered side to side. Um, so I got that now. Um, I actually picked myself a, bit, a better welding helmet so I can see a little bit better. It gets a little bit darker inside of my garage. So um, starting off is a little bit tough because the uh, other helmets are a little bit more dark. This, this helmet is a little more clear. So before the arc actually starts, I can see a little better. So I got me a better welding helmet. Um, got me a couple magnets also so um now i can actually go ahead and get started on building the beam so let's get started yeah. all right so first things first we got to get these cleaned up right here so we can weld on them so we're going to get them cleaned up down to bare metal they're bare metal right now we got to get all the surface rust off of them all right cool so now we got those cleaned up a little bit we're going to hit them with a little bit of sandpaper after but for now we're gonna get the rest of the stuff cleaned up with the with the disc so we'll get these all cleaned up so we can weld on that also all right so since we're tig welding this one right here we want to get the metal as clean as i can so i just hit it we just hit a rough with the with the angle grinder uh the flap disc on it so now we're going to go through with some sandpaper and uh clean it up a little bit more
clean these up also. All right, so now that we got this stuff all cleaned up, we actually got to get the tubes cleaned up also where these are going to meet. So we're just going to take sandpaper and clean up the whole tube, get it all nice and clean so when we weld it, we don't get any contaminants on the tungsten for the TIG welder. So I'm going to move these out of the way and then we'll get started. All right, cool. Now we all got them all uh, cleaned up. We're gonna set up the bulkhead up here, get it all mocked up so we can start tacking it into place, measuring it, um, trying to get it centered so we can get it all welded up. up we got to get it measured side to side make sure it's centered um, that way you don't have the wheel sticking out farther one side then you have the other a stock Volkswagen link pin beam is 34 and a quarter so this one right here right now is 30 and a quarter so we got to measure from outside of shock tower to outside of shock tower to see if we're at the 30 and a quarter and then we'll uh, um, if it's not we'll go from there fix it So now that it's uh, measured in place, it's exactly 30 and a quarter. I'm going to set up the TIG welder and um, tack these shock towers in place so I can center it side to side with these right here. All right, so I got my welder all set up here. Got my ground on, my foot pedal down here, filler rod, and my torch right here. So I'm just going to tack in these two side plates right here. I re-measure side to side make sure it didn't move at all. So like I said, I'm going to tack them in place and then we can get it centered side to side with these uh, center nuts. No. All right, now that I got attacked on each side right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen these bolts up a little bit and that way we can slide it side to side to make sure that it's centered from outside here out. Cause right now it's kind of pushed more this way. You wanna, wanna make sure you got the same amount of gap on each side right here. That way your wheels don't um, stick out one side farther than the other. So I'm gonna loosen these up a little bit. Let me get a wrench and then we'll get started on it. good to go so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna set my welder back up i'll tack these in place that way we can start welding it fully together it's been side to side measured it's centered side plates are perfectly uh at 30 and a quarter so it's exactly a four inch an hour beam so like i said i'm gonna get the welder set up tack these in place so i can start welding it all together all right so i got the welder set back up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through tack two times on each one get them hold it in place and then I'll go through and then pull this off of it, remeasure it, set it on my welding table, and then we'll weld it all up. All right, so now we got it all tacked together. I'm gonna to actually pull it off of here, remeasure it, <clears throat> flip it over, get a couple of tacks on the back side of this shock towers and then uh, uh, remeasure it again and then we'll go ahead and weld this whole thing up right here so get that set up all right so like i said i got it all off now um so i'm going to measure side to side because when you weld sometimes stuff gets um 
moves around from the heat. So like I said, I'm gonna measure it again before we fully weld it. And then I will uh, uh, make sure it's centered. And then if it is, like I said, we'll fully weld it. Okay, so now I got it all taken off of the bulkhead. Um, took it off, remeasured everything, made sure it was all level, um, make sure it was even side to side, um, wasn't farther one side to the other. So now what I'm gonna do is um, pretty much get it ready for welding. So I have, do have a uh, wire wheel on a drill now. So what I'm gonna do is just go through again, clean up the corners, because like I said, we are TIG welding this. So TIG welding actually picks up a lot of contaminants. So um, I'm gonna go through again, hit this with a wire wheel. And then before I actually start welding, I will hit it with some acetone on a rag, and then we can get to the welding. I got it all cleaned up with the wire wheel. Um, went through with some acetone afterwards, cleaned it all off. Um, actually picked up quite a lot of dirt afterwards after I cleaned it. Acetone cleaned it all off. So now, like I said, we're pretty much ready to start welding on it. Um, so like I said, let's just go ahead and get to it. Like you lost another one. I'm not a uh, professional welder. I didn't go to school for this stuff. Um, just kind of started practicing, watched some YouTube videos, and you know, got the hang of it pretty much. center mounts all welded in um, ready to go uh, kind of hot right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a quick break go get some food let this cool down and then I'll come back and uh, finish welding it all up all right so back in the garage so I went ahead before I went and got some meat I welded all of these up right here okay so now what I'm gonna work on is welding up the rest of the side plates I have I have them tacked in place right now so when I'm welding something like this, I like to have it straight up and down like this. That way, when I'm welding a, a round part, I don't stop as much. So um, I'm gonna clamp it on the table like this and then go ahead and get started on getting it welded together. So that is it for the day. It's actually getting later out here and it's kind of cold actually. We live in Southern California, so we're not used to the cold weather. It actually kind of snowed today, which is really strange. But we had the whole beam built today. Okay, so I had it all welded together. Um, on the next video, I'm actually gonna start in on uh, doing the bottom shock relocators and then also cutting down the through rods so I can assemble the beam. So I'm gonna assemble the beam fully in while it's raw. Um, make sure everything functions properly, nothing's binding up, make sure nothing's hitting. And then um, once that's, all good to go. I'm gonna rip it apart, send it off the powder coating, and bring it back, put it to the side so I can get in on the rest of this chassis build over here. Now, um, like I said, uh, follow up for the next video because it is gonna be coming out very soon. But uh, uh, 
If you guys like the video here, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Um, follow my social media, which is at underscore H-I-G-H dot D-E-F, at high def um, on Instagram. So if you guys have any questions at all, leave them below and I'll go ahead and gladly answer them for you and uh, stay tuned for the next one.